Let's take some time today to talk about a very interesting subject found particularly within Kenjutsu. It's quite known that in all the arts that are uh, somehow related to the sword techniques like Kenjutsu, Yaijutsu, Batujutsu, uh, in the Koryu forms, you know, the Koryu structure and its thought, uh, it's all based upon the idea that that practitioner should be able over the years of practice to deal with any kind of situation. That is, uh, if he finds, for example, another Kenshi, he, uh, theoretically, he could do any kind of movement and any timing that the other should be able to deal with that. So, if we talk about the Aijutsu and Batojutsu, for example, uh, even though the Kata are uh, beautiful and we have this uh, this clarity uh, in every movement in a real bato or yaijutsu situation uh, that practitioner should be able to draw uh, extremely quickly fast and be able to put the kisaki or the sword exactly uh, where he would like to if we take now if we can, if we go from the uh, kata practice to the free or the, the more real situations uh, now, when it comes to Kenjutsu, there is something very, uh, very particular and very interesting, which is the um, difficulty one may find to get into someone's guard or, some, or someone's kamai or someone's mahai. Uh, it's not easy once you find, once you have ahead of you an expert Kenshi, it's not easy to, to uh, break his, his guard and his movement and get into that person, that, that Kenshi. For this matter, there were developed many uh, structures and many methods. In our school, one of the most uh, known and uh, interesting and dangerous method is uh, Toritake in Kenjutsu. Uh, however, what Toritake seeks, what it looks for, uh, is to surprise the enemy. The method Toritake has always to do with surprising the enemy, and for that it uses uh, some quite weird angles, let's say. For example, if he enters in a ski, for example, very close to ski, instead of dealing with this kind of mai in Toritake, in this method, you try to get quite close to him. And uh, we should always remember that in Toritake we have the Yoroi for us and for him as well. But trying to reach some very particular angles which makes um, more uh, interesting for us to get through his, his, uh, his, his, his guard. But there is also another method which is quite interesting or principle that is called um, Katategiri niwa gosu no tokugari, which means uh, you can find, or there is, there are five sum of advantage in the katategiri attacks. Uh, a sum is a measurement of length in uh, ancient Japanese measurement systems. Uh, a sum uh, represents three dot. 03 centimeters that is five soon would mean something like 15 centimeters which is a lot you know in a and you have a kinshi against you and you have something like like this 15 centimeters means truly the difference between a perfect cut and um, a perfect miss uh, there are, there are also forms, there are also uh, studies in which it doesn't matter what the Oke tries to do or tries to attack, the Kenshi has his arms stretched and his Kisaki as his focus. So if he tries to attack freely, please do whatever you wish. You always find uh, quite difficult for him to get through. It doesn't matter if he keeps entering or if he keeps retreating, you always find a, a stretched arm and a Kisaki against him. So five soon would mean a lot. And what does this mean, five soon of advantage? Let's see. If he's here and if I have 
uh, ahead of me, in front of me, a, a powerful and uh, aggressive Kenshi. Say, so he takes out my sword violently and he tries to enter Inomako. One more time. As he tries to enter, I come to his Kamai just to keep myself guarded and then to set my sword, to set my, my blade as a technical element preventing him to keep moving further. But yet, he takes it out one more time and enters violently. So you see, from here, I do not have the angle to, as if I were here, to take him off or to take his blade off or even to cut him. Because his angle and his position, uh, his aggressive position, prevents me from doing this. So, this is one particular case in which he takes it off, enters. And by entering one more time, I can prevent being cut and cut him. Now, this is the my analysis. Now, uh, as, as, as we were saying, for once you cut, uh, a real cut, not just on the air, old masters would say, this kind of cut would be done like the tail of a dog. It should move freely. Because it's, it's just not possible for it to have a, a heavy weight here or a heavy cut as you can find in Oyuru Yiri, for example. The kind of cuts in which the Hara has to impose itself first, so uh, that Kenshi would uh, try to perform a cut that would be capable to open an Yoroi or a full armor. In this case, we, we just can't do this. So this would be the kind of cut in Kanketsu no Dunda, or a precise and, um, and fast cut. So for that, we would have to understand that could be a topic for other class, but one more time, he takes it off and enters. I protect myself and he comes to cut. We have to find a perfect a counterbalance, you know, a counterweight for the sword uh, in such a way that the blade would cut in the same angle and um, uh, in the same phase. Now, we just saw that this is the danger of the advantage of about 15 centimeters for katategiri. Uh, however, it's known that Kenjutsu over time, especially after the 17th century, was quite developed uh, in terms of Heiho, in terms of uh, strategy, and so one, one side would have one setting or one thought trying to deceive he, uh, his enemy, but his enemy would then um, develop one more time his point of view and his technique and so on, uh, in such a way that uh, by the 18th century, we would have a Kenjutsu which would be, you know, quite full of uh, strategies and uh, a very deceitful uh, characteristic. So, let's say, in our school, one more time, uh, in a particular Kumitachi, we would have this passage, which uh, deserves to be pretty well uh, studied. So, he is in In no Kamai, and after a long sequence of movement, I will now position myself and uh, uh, and um, make him move. I'll try to take him out of this position and then enter. When I enter, he uh, hits violently on my blade, on my sword, trying to create a gap, a branch. So, one more time. As he is here, he will enter to have full impact. As he enters, I try to catch him in katate kesagiri. So you see, this Marai is now such a Marai that I can, I can cut him, but he cannot cut me. So, let's turn, please. One more time. So I take him out of that position. And in this timing, you see, we have to split the time in two. So, when he finishes his hit, I am already here. But now, what, he, what he'll try to do is, he'll enter further and split my time. And so, he'll try to put me in a dogiri, ichimoji dogiri. So, one more time. I will take him out, and he will take the blade off. 
I will cut, but he will cut me, splitting my time in two. So, what one can do, what one can, she can do to prevent this is to split his time in one more time. So, let's see how could this be done. I will enter, take him off, and defend myself. In the Kumitachi study, in which one cannot um, change the form, um, the degree of freedom he has is such that he can change his timing, he can change his mind, but he cannot change the form itself. So, uh, it's quite a common mistake in this kind of study, in this Kumitachi, that the practitioner tries to cut, then he avoids this cut, so he has uh, enough time to defend himself. Because, of course, in a Pumitachi, you do not want to be caught or to be hit. Uh, on the other hand, what this teaches, what this shows us, is that before uh, a practitioner tries to use his uh, Haya Waza or Haya Igiko, which means his fast techniques, and to, uh, to try to to perform the, the kata and the forms uh, in the greatest speed he can, he should be able to know his own limitations and how to move freely from one mile to the other without being caught.